the finish line. Hey, the radio, the crew is far from slow. The light's no longer yellow. Ready, steady, go. Crank it up. Crowds all on their feet, not one bothered by the heat. Imagine them in the driver's seat. Trigger flag would be sweet. Bring it up. Oh, it's crazy. finish line. Hey, the radio, the crew is far from slow. The light's no longer yellow. Ready, steady, go. Crank it up. Oh, it's racing. Crank it up. Crowds all on their feet, not one bothered by the heat. Imagine them in the driver's seat. Sugar flag would be sweet. Bring it up. Oh, it's crazy. gentlemen welcome back to pedal to the metal racing league here on ptm racing tv hi again everyone i am christian the crusader striver welcoming you back to thompson motor speedway and tonight 
we've got ourselves a hot one it's the granddaddy for these guys it's the second to last race of the season the points race couldn't be any tighter we'll get to that in just a moment here but first introducing the following lineup for tonight's action-packed legend series main event starting on the pole that'll be lucas gorman in the number six and there's outside that's kayla mccarthy in the 24. Run number two is going to be Dakota Bra in the 52, and it is outside. That's Cindy Taylor in the 7. Run number three, Matthew Hoffer in the 84, and it is outside. That's Dustin Rouse in the 30. Run number four, Keith Taylor in the 8, and it is outside. Aaron Clark out of the 86. Run number five, Jeffrey Oaks in the 20, and the 3 of Dave Bichner. Shotgun on the field, Dustin Sloanacre in the 50, and right beside her is going to be Chantel, the throttle puddle, in the number 5. 12 drivers locked and ready here tonight. Weather looking pretty good, a constant dynamic sky. 78 degrees out here right now with the track. Degrees about 124, so they are going to burn the tires up just a little bit. They will have to be aware of that as they make them on in and work their way through this track. This track very tight and hard to master when it comes to trying to get multiple angles, that is. However, there are ways to work around that, and we'll talk more about that as time goes on. But with the winds only about north north of here and at two miles an hour, I don't think they're going to have any troubles with that tonight on getting the car to stay stabilized and ready here. Packed crowd on hand tonight. Of course, social distancing as usual. And a lot of drivers here just, just trying to get their last licks in, their last chances at a possible victory. It's hard to think. We started eight weeks ago. Now we're at week nine. And it has been an absolute barn burner of a time and a show for all these drivers and now we will and now we bring you 12 of the best just trying to become a champion here so real quick let's go ahead and look at the at the field and the points wise right now the points leader Cindy Taylor with a 308 she'll be she leads it off from Lucas Gorman in the six with, with 299 right behind her then you got the 297 of Kayla McCarthy in third place Dustin Rouse 289 still in the hunt and Dave Vishner really one of the only drivers left in there that can actually make a run and a chance for this here he's at 275 at the moment so this will definitely be a telling of the tape for these drivers here and I'm getting word right now Cindy Taylor has got problems with the motor it sounds as though something not going right on her end and she's not able to make it out there that's gonna open the door wide open to Lucas Gortman if he can finish strong here because he's only eight points back out of this this could be the opportunity he's been looking for this entire season here folks okay, but you also got Kayla the one you don't mess with Texas in the pride 24 McCarthy if there's ever a driver in my opinion that wants to win yet again it's McCarthy last time out at USA International she had the race won but a tire issue and then a t low, and then low, low on gas cost her the race, putting her in the back of the pack, losing her opportunity to finally end the streak of that driver right there, Lucas Gortman. The streak was ended, though, as Keith Taylor finally got his first win in defeating his sister, Cindy Taylor, in a barn burner to the finish. Will there be another new time winner here, or will we have another back-to-back, -back, or will we have another winner here? In the series points, we're going on the green flag here. Green flag is high out in the air, and Lucas Gorman works them on into the bottom. McCarthy going to try to run that middle line as quick as she can. Runs them off high, gets them side by side with Gorman. Down out of turn two. They bring him on down to the back straightaway. Here they come. McCarthy with the run. McCarthy works them on in on the outside. Now works them on in. Gorman trying to hold the bottom line. He, he knows she's going to play it there. She's going to hit that mark. Goes up. I starts to work him on in. You got yourself a battle for the late early with a 100 lap Enduro race. This is going to be something for these legend drivers. Still in the hunt. Whoa. Contact made there by Gorman and McCarthy, but they keep it stable. They keep it good there, and all cards are okay. Now here comes Dakota Bro and the 52 works him on into the inside there of Gorman. Trying to get a little payback from earlier in the season when he had a good chance at beating him and ending the streak early. But lost time and ground. Now he'll try to get up there with the Taco Lover racing machine of Gortman. They work him on in. McCarthy starting to have a pretty good line here. Starting to maintain position and hold her own here. McCarthy needs this win. If there was ever a time she needed a win, it's tonight. Because next week when they run at Myrtle Beach, that's her last chance to truly take home her first season championship of any kind in any series. She had a good chance a while back with the NASCAR Heat Series, unfortunately falling short in the trucks. 
now she looks to end that curse here in the legend cars but she's got a MERS row right behind him as Dakota Bro has now made the pass around Gorman there in the six uh, I gotta love when the sticky keys come up back to the action here whoa contact made there on the back oh King Taylor upside down your feature winner last time out in serious trouble cautions coming out Jeffrey Oaks involved in that one as well Holy smokes, immediately the caution coming out there and a big lick and a half for the Caterpillar number eight. The darn sticky keys got us there and then we're trying to figure out what happened. We're going to the replay to find out what happened here. That was some serious carnage on there. Here's another look at it. Watch carefully. Dagorkus Corbin's going to try to hold out here and try not to get passed around by Keith Taylor as well. If he gets perched further in the back here, he's going to have a hard time making up ground there. There are plenty of lines to hit, but Taylor, he just got right up into the wall, man. He had nowhere to go, and Hoffer just took a nice little nudge there and ended up spinning him, or ended up giving a little bit of a spin, if you will. Then he decided to do a break dance on the top of his hood. Man, you ain't from the hood. Don't be playing that. Just because you're on the hood don't mean you're from the hood. All bad jokes aside, let's go on board here with Hoffer and actually get an onboard camera look in on what he saw in that moment. Watch carefully as they come on out. The bump there from Keith. And Keith had nowhere to go. And that's a really good camera angle from our end there. That was exactly what happened there. And unfortunately, ended up spinning him around and giving him serious trouble. All drivers are okay, though. They are getting bored right now. They will be back out on the track. And they'll be ready to get up and running here in just a little bit. So we'll bring them on around a few times here and get everyone else situated out for another green flag restart. Strong start for Miss McCarthy. The one you don't mess with Texas showing her way and showing how she plays here. She's a tough cat, man. You can't count her out anytime you're out on the track. She'll give it to you when you least expect it. But we all know what Dakota Bro is capable of as well. He'll push everything, including his car and himself at times, to the absolute limit. He's been one known to do that before. We'll see if that is the case here tonight for him in that 52 machine. And then I don't think I need an introduction for Gorman there. I think you all know about him at this point. Dustin Rouse, though, man, in the, from the from the ashes to new, number 30. He told me earlier today that I'm surprised I even survived as long as I have in the points race. I thought I was doing pretty cruddy. But, hey, I mean, if I can work it in the season, I'm going to work for it all I can. And that is right, Dustin. You definitely have gotten something going here. And hope to see you back next time out. You're definitely starting to figure everything out here. But... Got Matthew Hoffer as well in that fifth slot right now. Hoffer has been in the podium quite a few times here, folks, but he has yet to really get the big win in, if you will. And what I mean by that is he hasn't really made a huge statement as of late on the series of any kind. He's been battling it out with people, but he just seems to have that little trouble of really getting that one extra boost. And Dave Bichner in the Monster Energy number three machine coming up on the grass. Not sure why he's trying to open his own lawn care service. But Hoffer, to me, just seems like one of those guys that just, he needs that little extra kick, that little boost to get that win in that he's been looking for. We will double them up out of turn one into turn two, bring them down the back stretch. We'll get that pace truck off here in a little bit. Thanks again to everyone tuning in on at home for choosing PTM Racing TV as your little show tonight to watch with us. Again, we did hit some milestones last night, and we want to say real quick to all of those folks at home, thank you so much for that. Couldn't do without you, but now we're going to bring him on down out of turn four. McCarthy leads the way, and off the green flag restart. Here we go. Off the line, through the chicane, down the front stretch. We go to turn one. They bring it. Dakota Bro will try to get something going there to the inside, trying to make it work. McCarthy had a good line on the outside. I'm surprised he did not stick with that. Work him on in now. Gorman right behind them all there. They're going to work them on in and try to get something going here as we bring them right into the back of the pack here. You can see these guys are battling it out and gals too. Cindy Taylor back out on the track. So she has managed to get the motor up and running and get everything situated. But she's got a long way to catch up in this one. She's lost a lot of time and ground. She's going to need to get some serious kicking done here if she wants to get a chance at this one. Nonetheless, back out on the track. Gorman, he's, he's going high. He says, I'm flying high. I want to go high. He goes up high now. He tries to take on to go to Brown. He takes the outside line away from him. He'll now bring it back in and get ahead for second. 
Back down out of turn one, they go to turn two. McCarthy is still your race leader. She is holding that. The pride of Texas, number 24, in contention to get something going here for a race win. It's been literally nine, almost nine weeks that she has been in victory lane. Oh, look at this now. Right behind all of them, though. Almost a three-wide situation as the Taylors and, Pottle, and Chantel the throttle got almost into a three-wide scenario there. They worked them on in. Beautifully done there. But Cindy Taylor is definitely trying to get something going here to stay in the points race and get a season championship in. Back down the back straightaway. Now we go. We have ourselves a battle for fifth. Dave Bitchner in the Monster Energy Machine goes ahead with the code red Monster Energy Machine of Chantel the throttle Pottle. Down the front straightaway we go now. Chantel has yet to been in victory lane, much less a podium finish ever since Ch Ch Charlotte Motor Speedway, the very first time we ever brought to you any kind of racing on PTM Racing TV. And it was done from a POV perspective from who else but me, I guess. They decided they didn't want to have anyone else do it, so they just said call him up. We'll have him do it. But side by side they go down now. Model has worded on in. She is starting to make up some ground in positions. Now into the top five here. She's going to get something going here. Dak down right behind her, though. Dave Bichner in the three. Monster Andy Machine still fighting. So is Keith Taylor. And the Caterpillar number eight. The eight has a fresh set of tires on there. And I got to believe he's going to work them on in. Down inside now. The throttle. Side by side they go. Almost touching three. Wide out of turn four. Dave Bichner clearing that one up. They clean it off really nicely there. This is impressive driving from the Legend Cars. But back up front now. We take it up to Gorman and Dakota. Dakota was getting a little bit in there with Gorman trying to get some maneuvers moved there. Oh, contact made there on Gorman by Bra. Contact's made and nowhere to go for Taylor yet again. He's in the he's in the Gorman. Caution's out there, folks, and that was not what you wanted to see if you're Lucas Gorman. Hard lick there, and Dakota Bra just capped him right in there. It didn't look intentional, but at the same time, you can't get too close to these guys. You give a little tap with these things, and they'll spin you around like at least expected. We're going on the PTM Instant Replay to find out more about this one. Let's take a close look at this one here. We're going to give you first the original replay here. This is what Gorman was dealing with. This is what caught our eye originally. You see right there with what Dakota Bruh is doing. You can see him work the inside line in. And he was really trying to get a push there. He's trying to get some momentum built up. Watch this, though. That little tap right there. That's what got Gorman. Gorman tries to save it, but he ends up getting it up into the hill, and then he gets into traffic. Aaron Clark, unfortunately, getting a little spin around there, but it seemed like he nailed that donut quite well. All right, now we're going to go over to Dakota and show you what exactly he saw when he did that. This is going to be a cockpit view here. All right, back up and running now. Let's show you here. Let's take a close look at how close these guys are in position and how they are in, on the spot. Here it is right here. Watch this. Got a little too close, and that tap was all it took. And he's already spun around and gone, and unfortunately, nowhere to go. You know, there is a thing of hard racing, but sometimes you got to be a little too cautious on that because you got to still maintain your car and save it up for later. And unfortunately, Gorman's going to get put back in the pack here. He's going to have to find a way to work that in now. Dakota will stay out on the track. Currently, right now, he's in the hunt to be a champion in the Street Stock Series. But tonight, they're in the Legend Cars, and they're going to try... Still getting their first win in a few of them. McCarthy looking for her second overall in general with the Legend Series. She almost had a win with the Street Stocks not too long ago when she took on Jonathan Big Smoke Atkins. But Big Smoke was able to come out on top that time with a strong three start. We'll see how it all plays out here as we do another lap around. So it is early. Michaela McCarthy is your race leader. Well, tonight's race is brought to you in part by Matt Mills Racing Team. For the, be the best Xfinity Series driver and team out on the track, it's currently sponsoring up Hell of the Metal Racing League for this season and even going into next season. So to show all your love and support to Matt Mills Racing Team, be sure to go and follow them up on Facebook at Matt Mills Racing Team and Twitter at Matt Mills Racing. At Matt Mills Racing Team, going further where no one else can go.
And then, of course, also sponsored in part by Pottles Wraps. Pottles Wraps is one of the best graphics designer in the entire iRacing racing scene. If you're looking for the best designs at the most affordable price, and something that you want to show off that won't break the wallet, be sure to look up Pottles Wraps today for more information. And I can tell you one thing, man. I've had some serious stuff done up on their cars, and they've they've made up some incredible stuff for me. I love what I've got on my stuff. It's just so much fun to run. And I'll even say this real quick. Uh, they're whipping me up something special here. Something more so for my family than anything. But eh, you guys will see in due time. But nonetheless, folks, we're bringing them on down around out of turn three. Bring them into turn four. Who will get the jump start here? And who's going to get the battle going here? We bring them on around. It's green flag racing yet again. Back down and around now. You can see Dustin Rouse in the front. Ashes to new. Battling it out with Chantel. The throttle pottle in the Monster Energy Code Red Beast. Number five. Works them on in. Now here comes the other side of the Monster Energy. It's the green version. The number three of Dave Bichner. Working them on in now. He tries to pull them on in. Trying to get something going there on the outside. He's got some momentum on Chantel. The throttle. The throttle will have to try to hold himself out here as they work them on in. Down turn one. Going into turn two. Side by side they go here. You can see Dave Bichner trying to get some momentum build up. He has yet to have a podium finish all season long. Problem is, though, the more these guys keep battling, Kayla McCarthy's just going to run away from him. You can see as they work him on Dan now to turn three, going into turn four here. Still nobody giving an inch there at the three wide salute. And this shit, oh, we got trouble already. Big trouble between Cindy Taylor and Dakota Brown. That's not what you wanted to see if you're in the Cindy Taylor camp. I'm not sure what happened there with Bruh, but it seems like he, he's been in two of the incidents now. And that was definitely not what you wanted to see whatsoever. We're going to the replay and find out what happened exactly. That was a hard little lick and knock and knock they took there. Here's a replay of that one here, folks. Watch carefully. Going to bring him on in. I'm wondering if maybe Gorman might have done something. Oh, no, right there. That's, that's weird. That looked like maybe Cindy lost control there. And if you, there is one thing I'll say real quick, and we'll, we'll talk about more of this in a minute. If you get too low on the bottom, you can run the risk of losing control there, and it will give you troubles nonetheless. We're going to go on board here and show you what it's like on Cindy Taylor's end here. I'll show you exactly what happened. Get a good shot there of what she was seeing right there. Let's see how close she gets to the bottom. Oh, right there, yep. Uh, it looked like maybe she drove up on it, actually. It didn't... It's hard to tell from that angle because it looked like she might have not have known that Dakota was there. It could have been maybe it was just a, a mistranslation or communication, but to me, it looked like Dakota didn't really try to go down low or anything, and it looked like maybe Cindy just came up and just didn't realize he was there. Hard to tell, but nonetheless, folks, they'll bring him on back around. We'll get the yellow out once more and... Get them all situated out here once more for some racing. Dakota Bruh is in pit side now. He's going to get a fresh set of tires and a little checkup on that car, I betcha. They are allowed three instant repairs, but they are only allowed three. They mess it up. That's their own fault. Bringing them back on in. A lot of drivers here in this one. A lot of drivers waiting to battle it out. Kayla, the one you don't mess with Texas, or the pride of Texas, as she likes to be referred to right now. Celebrating Pride Month in that number 24 LGBT community machine. Gort, very nice, very good driver in her own right. Former Legends driver, to be exact. She has been a top-notch tier woman of our sport in our series. Of course, we also had Sidney Taylor and Chantel the Throttle Pottle. Man, tell you one thing. If they ever join any other leagues and race anybody else, watch out, boys. She, they mean business. Dave Bichner and that Monster Energy Machine has been on the hunt for the podium, but he has yet to really get anything figured out necessarily. That's not a bad thing on his end. It's just a little bit of bad luck and a little bit also can be contributed to the fact that a lot of these guys are rookies still. Not a lot of them figured everything out here. If anything, you probably can tell who is not so much the rookies and who then who are still kind of figuring stuff out, which is not a knock on them. It's just iRacing is not an easy platform to master, much less an easy series to get around, especially when you're starting with the le when legends and street stocks.
but you gotta say this and you gotta give credit where credit's due they figured the tricks out they figured out the issues and they've been working at it this entire season whereas most whereas most things they may end it as soon as they literally got started bring them on around now side by side pack them up side by side to wide to the green we go 32 laps are now coming on in we'll bring them on down the front stretch Dave Bissner now in the Monster Air Machine trying to get a good run there, but he goes way too far out the outside. That opened the door up wide for McCarthy to get the run. Right behind him now, Dustin Rouse in the from ashes to new number 30. Bringing him on around. He's going a little low of the apron. He's got to be careful. We saw what happens when you get low on the apron on street stocks. All drivers battling their way on in. Dakota Brug and some serious bump draft in there up on Gorman. He stuck that front bumper right into his there. But it seemed to not affect either one of them there. They continue on down the back straightaway they go. Now here comes Sparky, Sparkalicious, Dustin Slownaker in the Grave Digger number 50. Working them on in. Now they go side by side, does Dustin Rouse and Dakota Bro. Dakota's trying to push his way on up three wide. They now take it down out at the back stretch. Down. Oh! Front stretch down to turn one and Chantel giving a nice little knock and knocker up. Oh, we got trouble there for Keith Taylor as well. Huge trouble, some zone, and huge hits to say the least there. I'm not sure what happened there. That might have been a miscommunication there from on the spotter's end. Dave has got serious damage up on that machine there. We're going to go to the PTM instant replay and show you what happened exactly there. You can take it three wide, but you don't want to do it too often. Watch this. Three wide, Gorman's down low. Chantel's trying to find a line, trying to do something. Now, I can't tell if maybe Dave came up on him there or maybe came down. But that definitely looked like a serious contact hit there, to say the least. And then Keith Taylor getting a little hit there. We're going to go over to his end of the stick. See if maybe we can figure out a little bit more. So we'll get Chantel's and Dave Bissner's little incident there. But man, Dave Bitcher took a serious lick. We're getting word though he is okay though. Oaksy got right in there and just gave a little love tap. And nowhere to go for him, to say the least. Now we're gonna go on board here with the five. We're gonna see on her angle what maybe that caused the situation to start. Maybe if she was not able to see that Gorman was down there. Here's the instant replay. Look at this. Oh, they're already touching right there. Uh, that's hard to tell. It looked like maybe a racing incident there. Both drivers just kind of got into it, but when you're going up the hill like that, <laughs> well, boy, you're going for a ride. This ain't like in the dirt series where you can just slide down a little bit with the dirt. No, there, there's, unless you're hitting a rut, you can't hold it there. Looks like, Kayla, the one you don't mess with Texas has opted into pit side there. Maybe planning a strategy there, but that's going to open up the door to Gorman and Sonaker, as well as Bruh now back in the hunt. But maybe thinking long-term strategy, that's not a bad idea in this case. We'll have to see how it all plays out here, but nonetheless, your top five right now, Sonaker, Gorman, Bruh, Rouse, and Pottle. And you got Jeffrey Oaks in the 20 Penn's Oil Machine. The 84 of Matthew Hoffer, the 7 Ghostbusters machine of Cindy Taylor, your points leader. The 24 of Kayla McCarthy has brought it back out. The pride of Texas is there. The Caterpillar number 8 of Keith Taylor, last week's feature winner. Seems like he's not catching any breaks yet again. He had a good run there at USA, but now he's uh, struggling a little bit here on this ever hard to master Thompson or Speedway. And nonetheless, Yellow flag, the green flag is high in the air, initiating the one to go. So they will get everyone situated out. And we will see how this all plays out for these drivers here. Man, it's been a heck of a battle to say the least. Back and forth, action-packed adventures and some serious side-by-side -side action. Not even halfway through this one. And these guys and gals are putting on a fight. We'll say that. They really want to make sure that this season ends on a high note. And then they can get themselves some serious points to finish it out as the green flag flies high in the air. 
Off that restart, Sean, looked like Chantel might have missed a gear or something. Because they're going to go three wide already at a turn one. Three wide they go, and they're holding their own. McCarthy tries to get herself in there in between. The ladies, Cindy and Kayla, going at it there. They clear it out, and they'll call it good. McCormick's got the race lead yet again. He wants payback after losing his streak one week ago. Now they'll work on down the front straightaway here, down into turn one, going into turn two. Slow Naker ch being challenged there by Bruh. Dakota Bruh trying to get something going here, trying to hold his own. Works him on down the back straightaway. Dakota Bruh has been in the back of the pack already. He's trying to get from the outhouse to the White House, but to do so, he's got to try to hold his own around Slow Naker. Works him on in down the front straightaway they go, and now Bruh and Slow Naker will do battle yet again. Neither driver giving it any inches or any positions here. They work them on now. As you can see, nobody, and I mean nobody, is leaving anything on the table here. There seems to be some trouble going on for the throttle. The motor seems to be dying down or maybe trying to save tires right now because that is not looking too good on her end. Aaron Clark in the 86 will now try to make a pass around her there, trying to get up some positions back in this one. Eighth spot now goes to Aaron Clark. They'll still go side by side as they work them on down out of turn two. The, the women of the sport, Cindy Taylor and Kayla McCarthy, work them on on the back straightaway here. Now they go three wide yet again out of turn three. Holds it there out of turn four to clean the pass for McCarthy. Daily double for the pride of Texas. Nice pass there by McCarthy. Nice maneuverability there as she pulls it on in. Side by side they go now. Oaksy's going to have some company. Jeffrey Oaks. We'll have to try to hold that Pennzoil 20 with Sonaker right in front of him as well as right behind him. The ride of Texas. Works him on in now. Look at this. Set three wide. They go. And yeah, look at this. Sonaker backs off the throttle a little bit. But McCarthy keeps it stable. I believe there may have been a little connection point there, but it wasn't too much there because Jeffrey Oaks is overtaken for third. But now Kayla McCarthy is going to try to challenge him up. But Jeffrey Oaks as they work him on down the back straightaway. Watch this turn by McCarthy. She's got a fresher set of tires. She's going to make it work and make Oaksy pay for this. Side by side down out of turn four. Clean pass maneuverability there from Miss McCarthy. Right behind all of them here. Cindy Taylor, your points leader, is in the hunt still. We're almost halfway there. She's trying to get some maneuvers pulled off. She's trying to get ahead. Justin Rouse from the Ashes to New, number 30 right now, is also trying to get back in the hunt. He saved his tires up. Now he realizes he's got to go a little bit. Side by side, they go down at it to earn four. Taylor now and Rouse at it here. Cindy trying to get the Ghostbusters machine in victory lane for the first time this season. She's had so many podium finishes yet. Not a win yet. Side by side, pass out of turn one, halfway to two. She passes around Dustin Rouse. Now she looks to challenge the Grave Digger number 50. Sparkulish is up high. He's in trouble, trouble, trouble. Yellow, yellow, yellow is out on the field. Sonaker got up high and he took Bichner with him. Sparky, what happened there, man? Holy smokes. We're going to the replay. You know what we got to do when we see that stuff? We got to check the replay out. I'll be honest with you folks out there at home. I don't know what happened there with Sparky. Sparkalicious looked like he had a pretty good size run there. He got it up to the outside. Uh, I think he might have overclocked it on turn one, on turn three. Clark and Bichner, Bichner getting the worst blunt of it. So Naker, I'm not, we're going to go on board here. and We're going to show you where he was at in the turn. And I can talk more about this here because this is where you really get interesting. Well, let's take a look here on the back stretch. Let's see where he was positioned it at. Oh yeah, right there. He was out of the black and he was in the rubble and he had too much acceleration. When you do that, folks, that does not allow the car to stay stabilized. And that Gravedigger number 50, unfortunately, nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. Unfortunately, they ain't digging no grave for Gravedigger. Matter of fact, I think the old Dennis Anderson was set flat out. He'll take that old piece of junk and dig you a grave. Well, uh, Sonaker, I would say right now you've got some work to do because you just dug your own grave, my friend. <laughs> but nonetheless, he, he'll get it on back on the track. It'll situate it out. And he, for the record, he knows I'm messing with him. Uh, back out on the track, though. Dakota Bra, halfway now into this one is your race leader, Cindy Taylor, the seven Ghostbusters machines opting to stay out. I gotta believe this is a strategy on her end to stay in there when she needs to right now. 
Aaron Clark in the 86. He has yet to have a podium finish victory this whole season. We'll see how that plays out for him here. Keith Taylor in the eighth. And then Dave Bichner in the three. We'll get his lap back there. That will allow the drivers to get another chance, another position. On this short track, that wave around is going to be crucial and key for some of these guys and gals because they're going to need to get out of pit side and then back on the track. And there's not enough time to get that done. These shorter tracks, you have to be careful on how you pit and where you pit at, but also on how you handle the car and how you handle the suspension of it. One wrong move can result in trouble and failure, and that's where you don't want to be. So uh, real quick, just going to give you guys a little reminder. Cindy Taylor is your season w race, season, wow, she's season one points leader right now with 308 points over Gortman with nine points behind him, behind her. McCarthy, two points out of Gortman with 297, and then Rouse with 289, and Bichner with 275. And you got to believe Bichner definitely wants a strong finish here. And this is really going to be a telling of the tape here for these drivers. Real quick at home, thanks again to everybody tuning on in. Uh, Josh Brantlinger topping on in. Good to see from you and good to hear from you. Michael Hill, we miss you, buddy. Take it easy out there. Michael Hill, unfortunately, not able to make the race due to personal reasons, but on the green flag restart, we've got Dakota Bra leading them on out with Cindy Taylor trying to hunt it on in. Now, Kayla, the one you don't mess with Texas, or the pride of Texas, I should say, right now works them on in. She's got serious position going there. Whoa, wait a minute, down the back straight away. We got trouble there. Caution's out. What on earth happened there? Problems for Dustin Rouse in the 30. I'm not sure what happened exactly with him there. We're going to the replay to find out more about this one. I saw Chantel get loose there. And I thought I saw another car involved in that one. Off that restart, though, man, Aaron Clark just backed right out of the throttle. And those guys were just at their game. Looks like Chantel just got right up in there with Judge ah, Jeffrey Oaks. And unfortunately, that ended up starting the chain reaction. We'll go over real quick and take a look at her end of this and see if maybe there was just another racing incident or maybe... Might have just been a little bad, bad case of a wrong scenario. Uh, judging by everything there, it looked like the car was just coming on down on its own. and She didn't realize Jeffrey Oaks was there and unfortunately nowhere to go. It's hard it's hard to control sometimes, but those those camera angles and those, those positioning when you're in there is not exactly the easiest to figure out. So a lot of times you got to be really reliant on your spotter and unfortunately the spotter not coming through for her there. Obviously judging by the wreck there. But nonetheless, we'll bring him on around now. The front stretch, Cindy Taylor will be your race leader. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's race is brought to you in part by Matt Mills Racing Team. If you're, if you're The best racing team on the Xfinity Series right now has joined us in sponsoring Season 1 and also Season 2 for the Street Stocks and the Legends Series. We will have more series to come for them, but they are sponsoring season one here with us at Pedal the Melda Racing League. So a big shout out and thank you to Matt Mills Racing Team, the best racing team on the Xfinity Series right now, looking to go further in the peers. And then of course at Pedal's Wraps, thank you so much for your donations of the wraps to the season winners and season champions. Pedal's Wraps has customized and designs a lot of these drivers out on the track you see today, whether it be here in the leagues or in the in the public lobbies. Sooner or later, you're going to find a Paul's Wrap design somewhere. If you're looking for the most affordable design on the market with something cool that you can get it at the best price, Paul's Wraps is the way to go. Back out on the field here. We get ready to go here. Cindy Taylor will have her brother, Keith Taylor, and the cat number eight. Where have I seen this before? Oh yeah, a couple weeks ago, USA International. After our week-long break, it was those two right there. Keith and Cindy, that battle for the race lead and the win.
Keith Taylor had just saved up just enough on Cindy. Cindy had nowhere to go and nothing she could do about it. And it ended up going to Keith Taylor for the race win of his of his first race win of his career in the I racing circuit. I talked with both of them earlier today and they said it was fun to have a brother and sister duo, but admittedly Cindy said that, you know, I wanted that win more than anything, but Keith definitely needed it considering all the stuff he's been through. Keith Keith uh, a strong driver and a strong person in real in the world. He's dealt with a lot of things and a lot of scenarios and he is just out to prove he can fight the world and, by the grace of God, be able to still race on. Green flag high in the air. These guys are back at it yet again. Look at this now. McCarthy trying to get an early run there. We got trouble already for Keith. Keith Taylor getting the blood of what happened with Cindy Taylor. And unfortunately, we've got a big pile up out of turn two. Well, I don't even know where that one started. So let's just go to the replay. I got up. I'm wondering if maybe there was a little tag there from McCarthy. Looked like there was, and Cindy couldn't quite get it steered around. Clark gets into Keith. Matthew Hoffert getting a blunt of it. Slonaker, Rouse, and Hoffert getting a serious lick or two in there. That was not a good move on either end of the spectrum there. We're going to show you real quick another side of this. We're going to go to the actual cockpit of Kayla McCarthy from that start. Take it on a look. Watch closely on this restart. Let's see what happens exactly. From my perspective, it looked like maybe Cindy backed off a little bit there. And unfortunately, already they were just got right into each other and there was nowhere to go. Now we'll go to Cindy's end here. And we'll show you another view of what exactly she saw in this case. Well, we'll take a look here. See if maybe she just missed a gear there. No? I mean, a little tap there. It looked like she was backing off, and she don't, she over, she just had to overdrove it a little bit out of that turn after the bump in McCarthy. And Keith, unfortunately, had nowhere to go. A tough break, to say the least, for Keith Taylor. The curse keeping, keeping tensity with him there. I guess I gave him the old broadcaster's curse, if you will, because unfortunately, Cindy and Keith, brother and sister, as I mentioned before, and strong battles there, and all of a sudden, I jinxed them once more. But nonetheless, folks, we'll bring him on around one more time. Absolute heartbreaker for Keith, but knowing him, he'll get it fixed up and bring it on back around. But there's a lot of guys and gals in that pit right now getting fixed up. That was not the start these drivers wanted, that is for sure. But we will see how it all plays out for them here. Right now, you can bring them on around. I think this will be the one to go next time by. On down the front straightaway. The one to go has been initiated. Flagman has that green flag was sticking up straight to the skies, posing the number one, which means one thing. The ladies will have some competition with some drivers in the back looking to take them on here. Dustin Rouse trying to make a quick hustle back to the back here. He's just trying to get his lap back. He got the lucky dog, and they're going to stay under caution. They decided that, no, we need to give Dustin a fair chance. And you can't blame him, but still, you got to admit, every now and then, you got you to gotta work your way around it sometime as we now get the one to go here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, don't tune out. Don't give out just yet. Share us around and make sure everyone likes, shares, and follows up on PTM Racing TV. We've got ourselves a heated battle between the Legend Series and coming up after this. You don't want to miss this. It's the Dirt Series. Mississippi Dirt League will bring their dirt stocks to life 
at Lyman Land Speedway. Oh, I can't wait to call that one. But nonetheless, out of turn four. Here they come down the front stretch. Off the green flag restart. McCarthy will hold her own with Dakota Bro. Looked like he was trying to get a run there off that start, but he had to back off. Gordman now going to do a battle. The, the points leader of one and two, seven and six. Cindy Taylor and Gorman at it here. Cindy's going to try to keep that inside line to all to herself away from Gorman, but Gorman knows he's got to start figuring something out here. Ooh, contact there made on Aaron Clark. The 86 probably going to get a little bit loose there off that wall there. He's got it all situated as they work him on down now. The run. Oh, big trouble yet again. Dave Pitchner getting into it there with Clark, Slonaker, and Keith. Holy smokes. Just when you thought they had the cautions all taken care of, another one comes on out. That was not what you wanted to see. Here's the replay, though. Take it on in again here. Let's see where this happened exactly. What exactly started this chain reaction? Oh, Dave Bichner, man. He got sideways loose. So, Nick, I know where to go. Clark gets the tap and a smack. And unfortunately, when you're in that situation, there's not much you can do about that. So Naker seems like he's got a bit of damage there up on that car. We're going to go on board here and show you how bad he got smacked up around there. Makes his pass around Clark. Clark opened the door up. And you can see what Dave was trying to do. He was trying to bring it up high, bring it down low. you got to be careful, though. And so Naker had nowhere to go in that case. He was already in trouble. See Keith Taylor, serious damage on Clark, getting the probably the worst blunt of it if you want to talk about damage-wise. Motor-wise, it's hard to tell because sometimes these things don't even tell you exactly. But nonetheless, they'll bring him on back around and they'll give them another chance here. Still still about 27 laps remaining in this one once they get to the we got one flight, one to go here. You can see Solnaker, he's gonna try to beat that pace truck out, try to get out of exit before he comes around. Just like just like the movie Cars, out of Lightning McQueen being the pace truck, he will be successful, but only by a handful there. So McCarthy, Gorman, Dakota Bruh, Miss Cindy Taylor, and Jeffrey Oaks in the Pennzoil 20 round out your top five. You got Bottle, Rouse, Taylor, Keith, that is, Hoffer, and Clark are all out in the back. With Sonaker working his way on around yet again. A lot of time left, but not a lot of ground to make up for some of these drivers. But if you want to talk about points wise, right now, Gortman needs a strong field day. He needs another win in if he can. He was the most winning driver of the season with an incredible sixth in a row after week two. But then two weeks ago, after our week-long break, it was at USA International Speedway. Keith Taylor ended the curse that he had of bad luck and got win number one in. A special occasion for him. But I can tell you right now, folks, he's right now, he's still battling some demons right now. Those old, the asphalt devil is out on the track and he's trying to take over the Lord of Speeds from Spain. But like any good, like any good belief in any good religion, the Lord of Speed will not be deterred from this evil. We will see how well they, how well these drivers follow the Lord of Speed's guidance as they'll bring them on down around the back stretch. They'll bring it to turn three. They'll go into turn four, and then it's green flag racing yet again. All right, folks, one more time around. It is time to bring the cars and the stars to life. Back down turn four, green flag, high in the air. 27 laps remaining in this one. Bring him on down around. Turn one, they go into turn two. Gortman trying to do what McCarthy did to him earlier. Looks like he's got a run there to the outside. He pushes it nice and well done. They're out of turn two. But McCarthy not to be deterred yet. She's going down low, trying to play a low blow on Gortman. Side by side, they go down the front stretch. Gorman had to run the outside, but now McCarthy has something in the bottom for him. Works him on in. They are still battling it in between. Two good friends going at it here on the back straightaway here, but rivals right now. Neither one want to quit this one. Neither one want to give it up as they work him on down and around. Now it's turn three going into four. 
Neither driver giving it any any position here. Neither driver giving any room to one another, but Gorman seems to have a better run there out of turn one into two. Gorman trying to hold his own. McCarthy trying to stick with it. The battle is for the lead here. Now McCarthy down low. Here she goes, trying to make the big move from the bottom. She's got to be careful of that apron, though. We saw what happens earlier. Side by side, they still take it. These two are not giving any room to one another. Back down low, McCarthy, whoa, Gorman got a little close there. I'm surprised they held it. Mark Gorman, though, seems to have the better run, though, still, and keeps his position and maintains his rhythm. You can see these cars actually getting off the ground a little bit. That's because they're hitting some bumps there in the turn. That's what was sending those, speed, what sending those street stocks a little wider earlier, and that's what you got to be careful around here. Meanwhile, back in the battle of the pack here, top five. You got a battle for the top five, three, wide out of turn two. Chantel Pottle, Cindy Taylor, and Keith Taylor going at it. Keep trying to make some, some time here, trying to get some momentum built back up. Chantel just trying to stay in the hunt, if you will, trying to get something going here for herself. Work them on around now, out of turn. We're on going into two, Dean Bishop out in company. He's got Dustin Rouse now. Dustin Rouse and, T and Dave Bitch are getting into it there. They spin out of turn two. Caution's out. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Unfortunately, out on the scene and not a code, not a code red situation like Miss Chantel there. But yeah, I was not what Dave Bitchner and Rouse wanted to happen there. We're going to the replay to find out this one. Here is the replay here. We're gonna first go look at the camera view from the original position. I can tell you right now what Dave Bichner was trying to do, but I think he bobbled there and he was trying to get it recentered out and unfortunately, he ended up tagging Dustin Rouse in that situation. Now we're gonna go on board here with Miss Dustin Rouse. We're gonna see what, what Mr. Rouse is seeing here. Here is the replay. Look at that man, just seeing the ladies right in front of you just battling it out. You gotta be thinking, what do I gotta do with that? And then here's where trouble started. Rouse held his line and then got tagged. And now we're going to go over to the end of Bichner. And we're going to see maybe he just got a little loose off that. We'll see here. He tried to back off. That was just a slight bobble. That really wasn't even a turn. He just had a bobble there. It may have been the bump getting him, and they were too close into it. Could have been a multitude of things, but I did, to me, it looked like maybe the track got him. Going off the track tech talk, man, I can tell you right now, what it feels like on the track, it feels like you're just getting yourself into trouble. Oh, hold on a minute. Bitchner, hold on there, bud. Not sure what happened with Bichner there. He just got way loose and into the infield. I'm not sure if coronavirus hit him so hard he had to open up his own lawn care service just to make rent stew, but I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I even I don't have to worry about that on month's end, but looks like he's just trying to get his lap back, trying to get some time back. Looks like Keith Taylor actually staying on out. I believe, yep, so it looks like Dave Bichner and them actually are going to be your front runners because Dave did not pit and neither did Keith, but Gorman, McCarthy, Bruh, Oaks, and everyone else in the field did. So this is going to be an interesting strategy. Will that play into effect? Will that be able to get them going? It's hard to tell sometimes, but the one to go now, this could get interesting here, folks. So, but I'll tell you right now, folks, these guys have been absolutely at it here this entire season, this entire race to be exact. Strong crowd on hand here tonight still. Again, we do appreciate you guys tuning in and supporting us up. I know the fan I know these drivers love it. Every time you get on there and talk with us here in the comments, it's so good to have you on here. We haven't been on the comments section for a little while, but we'll get to it. Green flag here on the front stretch. 16 laps remaining. 
There's not a lot of time left. They're going to have to start figuring something out here. Dakota Brown now trying to go three wide already out of turn one. He tried to find an opening in his seam. Couldn't quite get it there. Dave Bichner leads him on out. The first time tonight he has ever leaded this one off, but he's going to lose that one pretty quick. Three wide out of turn four they go. They hold it. But Taylor is getting closer to Bichner. Whoa, hold on. Hold on. Coming out of turn one. They survived that one. Taylor had to back off. Gorman with a serious run there in that six machine. The Taco Lover Racing Machine now works him on in. Jeffrey Oaks in the Pennzoil 20 machine tries to hold his own. Out of turn three. And we got trouble already. Taylor spot out out of turn three. Paul has shopped down the track. Caution's coming out. Well, I'm not sure what happened there. To put it nicely, I don't know if maybe that was Taylor getting loose or maybe he had help. We're going to find out here. Here is the replay here. Let's find out exactly what was the culprit there. Dakota Bruh brings to the inside. Oh, tap, and there you go. Same turn, too, as Gordman earlier. And Pottle just got to imagine probably a little miffed at one. We're going to go on board here with Bruh and see if maybe he just overdrove it there a little bit or there's something else. Here is the PTM Instant Replay. You can see Bruh's just trying to challenge for that race win, just trying to get up in there, but there is a difference between being way too aggressive and then not understanding how the car can handle. And I got to admit, that one actually just looks like another race against him because he just kind of got into him there. Strong driving on Dakota Bruh, but... Unfortunately, and ended up tagging Taylor, which got in a bottle. And now that's going to almost initiate a green-white checkered finish, which if I'm Caleb McCarthy right now, I am. I got to be looking to the stars for this one and thanking the Lord of Speed. This one's looking like it's almost gift-wrapped to her. But Jeffrey Oaks is no pushover. A former champion in pedal of the Metal Racing League. He has won on many series and platforms before. I guarantee you, if there's one driver that wants to win now, it's definitely him. So, next time around, I believe there'll be nine to go off the restart. Your top five, McCarthy, Oaks, Bichner, Gortman, and Bruh are your top five drivers. Cindy Taylor needs a strong field day and points right now. She needs to try to keep that lead away from Gorman because if Gorman gets it going, he'll take it back when you least expect it. Rouse just trying to make up for the lost ground and time from earlier. The guys and gals of PTM right now doing everything they can. Pedal of the Metal definitely showing up what they're up to tonight. Bring them on around once more. And we will see these cars come back to life once more and see if maybe we can get something going here. So it looks like it'll be eight to go actually this next time by. Almost, if they wreck, if they get in our caution though, it will be a green white checkered after that, I can tell you that much. Can the Pride of Texas finally retrieve her crown and once again be a champion here? She hasn't won since two on the first week I should say she was in the hunt two weeks ago she had a chance now it's time to make up for it in the chat right now Sean Gordman tuning on in Harley Barletta good to see you from, good to hear from you again rooting on old Lucas and then Candace B. McCarthy cheering on for McCarthy okay, my, my girl Candace it's good to hear from you again and yeah right now She's in it. We're in the hunt right now. We'll see how it all plays out. This time by out of turn four. The cars and the stars bring them to life. Here we go. Back down out of the front stretch. Turn one will signify this one. Will they be able to hold it? They are successful. But Oaks to the outside. McCarthy sees it. She closes the gap. Trying to close that door immediately. Here comes Corman now to the inside. 
to the inside out of turn four. He'll battle him on up. We've only got seven laps remaining in this one, folks. These drivers will not give an inch this time. Oaks trying to hold his own, trying to get a podium finish for the first time this season. It has been so long since he's been in that hunt and in that championship battle. Now he just wants a good finish. Gorman is desperate. He needs a point say. Oh, bro, it's troublesome out of turn three. He's upside down. Dakota, bro, upside down. That's going to signify the green-white checker now. But what happened to bro? He cannot get it refired. He's got the motor burning up there. He's trying to get it off the track. It's not going to happen. He's going to have to go pit side now. Let's go to the replay and find out what happened. Oh, contact on Cindy there. But where did the con but where did the wreck start? Oh, Bitchner getting into him there and sending Bruff for a loop upside down and up and over she goes. That was a nice little knock here too, if you will, and that was a serious lick for him there. We're gonna go on board here with Dave Bitchner. Let's see what exactly happens here. You can see right here, you can see Dakota's really starting to make up some town and ground. Dave's just trying to hold his own here. And yeah, I, I gotta believe, I mean, it looks to me like Dave kind of just went in there a little too hard. And unfortunately, Dakota getting a nice little liquor taste in there. Unfortunately, nowhere to go. And that pretty much ended the night for Dakota, bruh. But the green-white checkered finish will come out now. They'll have to finish it under that. Can the one of... You don't mess with Texas. The pride of Texas. Call her whatever you will. She rocks the LGBT community 24 into the lead right now. With the Pennzoil number 20 of Jeffrey Oaks right behind her. And then, of course, the most dominant legend driver right now of the season. Lucas Gorman in the Taco Lover Racing Machine is in the hunt for another podium and a win. But Cindy Taylor is right now your points leader and she is just a few spots away from cementing her name in pedal the metal history by getting this one, not only for a win, but also a season championship. And if there's one driver that wants it more than anything, you can bet it's her. But she's got a murder road to get ahead to and try to take on. We will see them come back to life shortly. to go down the back straight away they come they're eager they're ready and you can tell they are in the hunt they're wanting some victory here bring them on out around turn four one more time green white checker finish this time by here we go off the restart, Gorman is trying to sneak his way in early, trying to make up time there, trying to make up ground. Oops, he's going to hold the outside, try to do what McCarthy did earlier. It's not going to happen, though, on the back stretch, though. Or maybe not! McCarthy's been passed! Out of the back stretch they go now, down turn three. Down turn three into four. McCarthy trying to sneak her way in this. The white flag is out. McCarthy and Oxy will battle to the end. They're going to stay side by side out of turn one and a two. These two drivers will not give an inch. McCarthy's got the run on the bottom. Now Gorman trying to get something off of, of Oaksy. Oaks trying to hold his own there, trying to keep it going there out of turn three and a four, though. Can she keep it still? McCarthy's going to win title number two at, at Thompson Speedway. Holy smokes, what a finish. It could have happened to a better driver in all honesty. She made a lot of people proud tonight. I know the wifey's going to be happy about this one. Kayla McCarthy, victory here. Jeffrey Oaks, his first time 
in podium. And if you're going to do it, why not tonight? But for that young lady right there, Miss Kayla McCarthy, this was all she's been waiting for. Week one, she won. Now, the last week before the championship, she finally gets the monkey off her back, and it's time for some burnout. What a showing and what a battle between all drivers involved here tonight. Hard to believe it ended the way it did, but it ended the way it needed to for Miss McCarthy. Finally getting that win in and a huge, huge battle there. Gorman tried to make a run there and almost had it. If he had like two more laps, he might have had a better chance at it, but he'll still get the second place finish. We're going to give a few minutes here to Jeffrey Oaks and give him a chance to join in here with us. And then, of course, McCarthy's down and Pitt's going to be down in pit. Man, oh man, guys, if you were not entertained by that one, you missed out on a whole host of racing. That was incredible battles there. Good showing, good times there, to say the least. It was a lot of fun to call and a lot of fun to shit to see here with these drivers. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. That was that was something here, folks. That was something. Still waiting for our three drivers. We've got Gortman in the wings right now. He, he jumped out of that car really quick. I think he was in the... I think he was just wanted to talk with us really quickly. I think that's what he was up to. So. Uh, apologies there, folks. We did not know that was going to happen. Somebody was trying to get a hold of us and didn't realize we were still live here. That is uh, probably my end there. I'll take that for what it's worth. But let's go ahead down to pit side. All right, folks, we're down to pit side now. And I'm joined here with Lucas Gortman, the Taco Lover Racing Machine number six. And Gortman, I got to say, man, you had some ups, you had some downs. Then you finally had kind of a consistent up there at the end and almost a chance of the race win. You gave it quite a run there on McCarthy. Yeah, that, that was definitely, you put it right there on the on the. On the spot there it's ups and downs <laughs> uh but good thing we ended on the up and i mean that was that was some great hard racing between uh oaks and uh mccarthy and i and i mean thanks for everyone running me clean there that was awesome <laughs> yeah for sure there that's what a lot of these guys may be rookies but they still know how to keep a clean race when they need to and battle hard at the same time and i gotta be honest gorman you were fighting hard for the season you were trying to get that points race back up I got to believe tonight you got a little bit of help there in, in trying to get away from Cindy Taylor, but I got to think also that you're still going to be in the hunt there for the next uh, last race on the season. Yeah, we gained a few points uh, on Cindy today. Uh, we got one more week, and uh, we're going to try to try to win it like every week, but, I mean, we get, it's going to be all on where uh, she finishes if we do win it. And, I mean, it sucks that it's not all in our hands uh, for the points, but, I mean, we can just go out there and just run the best we can, you know. That's all you can ask for anytime you're out there. And definitely tonight you proved why you can really hang with them and really keep up to your your name and legacy. So I got to ask, Gorman, who do you want to thank here for this one? I'd like to thank my family, you know, my wife for dealing with me, um, you know, PTM, uh, Matt Mills Racing, Pottles Wraps, you know, everyone that sponsors everything. Uh, I mean, just everyone who comes out and watches, everyone who races, I mean, it's, it's awesome, man. I enjoy it. It's great. It's been a good showing and a good time seeing you out here, Gorman. Congratulations on a second-place finish once again here on the Legend Series. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was your number two finisher here tonight, Lucas Gorman in the Taco Lover Racing number six. Now we join here in victory lane. Uh, I've been wanting to talk to you for a while now. You got the race win in finally. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the pride of Texas, Kayla McCarthy. McCarthy, the last time we talked to you is literally week one. And then you finally got it into the street stocks. But for the legends wise, this is the first time we've talked to you since week one. That's got to mean something to you, I bet. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, big, big win. Um, hats off to Lucas. Um Oaksy for battling, you know, I mean, all, all three of us were on the same pit strategy, um, racing clean. There was a couple couple shots where, we, you know, on restarts where I, I took it three wide, and, but it, we all came out good. Um, man, this feels good. This is, this is uh, we need this big time. 
you definitely need it and i would say it's probably the biggest confidence boost you can have gotten and especially on a track like this this got to mean more to you than anything because there was a lot of heated battles and competition there to say the least yeah definitely i mean and and to come back on this track from struggling so bad on sunday granted it's a different car but to come back onto this same track um and perform so well um is a real big confidence booster and going into the next you know the last race um able to gain a couple points on lucas a couple points on cindy um real big confidence booster going into that championship race and um and let's go let's go <laughs> Well, you have one more week before that all comes down, but you do only have a couple more days before you fi finalize the season at uh, the Street Stocks when you when you take it on in USA. But we are finishing out here in Legends at Myrtle Beach, I believe, next week out. So I gotta think, I gotta see from this right now, McCarthy. You've got a lot of fans in the crowd right now, and you got—I know your <laughs> wife was listening in, but I gotta ask you, who do you want to thank so much for this one? Um, I gotta thank Matt Mills Racing, Courtesy Chrysler Jeep, um. Pottles Wraps, um, everybody in PTM, PTM Racing, PTM TV, um, all the competitors. Um, man, this feels good. This is um, a big, big, uh, I guess a big confidence booster. Um, shout out to my wife. for Thanks for watching. I love you. Um, sorry you're at work right now. Can't wait for you to get home. I think she's going to come home, and we're going to have a little celebration over there in Texas. But nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, your winner here tonight, the Pride of Texas, Kayla McCarthy in the 24. Congratulations again. Thank you, sir. Yes! <laughs> All right. Well, if you couldn't tell, folks, she's a little amped up right now, so we're going to go let her uh, celebrate and have a few boos on us. So, But nonetheless, folks, that is going to be the end of, this, of the night for us here in the Legends next week. Stay tuned. It's all on the line. One more race. One last chance. Who is taking home the gold? We'll find out next time out. And then, of course, Sunday night, we've got a championship race there But for those street stocks. But nonetheless, folks, from all of us here, we got to thank our sponsors at Matt Mills Racing Team. Thank you so much for sponsoring us once again this season and next season. The best Xfinity Series team out on the market is currently working their way up in the series and working their way further in time and they look to get more and more ground and coverage as time goes on. So be sure to go and follow these guys up at Facebook and at Twitter at, at Matt Mills Racing Team on Facebook and Matt, at Matt Mills Racing on Twitter. And then, of course, our good friends over at Piles Wraps. Piles Wraps, if you've seen a few of these cars out on the track, well, they probably got done over there at Piles Wraps. One of the best graphic wrap designers on the market. If you're looking for something at the most affordable price and the design to your liking, your style, your way, look no further than Piles Wraps today. For your, for more information, look them up on Facebook. And now, ladies and gentlemen, one more week. One last week of Pedal the Metal Racing before we hit Season 2. And I can't wait to show you guys what we've got in store for you. But for now... I gotta keep everything a secret. I can't tell people right now. So we must say goodnight for now. But for all of us here at PTM Racing TV, don't go anywhere. In just a couple short minutes, we will be with Mississippi Dirt and seeing their dirt stacks at action at Lima Land. So for now, we'll say from all of us to pedal the metal. Good day, good day, good night, goodbye. See you later. Sayonara. Be safe. Be good. And good night, everybody.